Eric. I'm Vanessa. I'm Travis. Would you say hello there? I was going to say Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy <laughs> hello New there. Year. <laughs> so, guys, I hope your Christmas was well, and we've got a New Year's oh, edition of Better Late Than Never coming up next. It is 2019. 2019. Finally. Almost. What did you guys do for uh, Christmas? What'd you get? Did you get anything cool in your stockings? Anything I got fun? fruit. I was oh, I got some good stuff. Like an orange. I we got, got candy. We got a PlayStation 4. Technically, we bought it on Black Friday, but hell, Christmas comes but once a year. But yeah, guys, check out all the Christmas episodes that we did for Better Late Than Never. But now, we are moving into a new year. And Travis, I specifically requested that we have something focused on a new year type of theme. Oh, I was well aware of that and yes. I was well ahead of that as well. All right, perfect. So Travis, what do you have well, for us to bring in the Well, stop talking and I'll tell them, okay? Jeez. I can't. This is the oh, talking so channel. Exciting. Talk yeah. the whole time. Well, this movie was released June 16th of 1989. June? And it's a New Year's movie? 1989. Well, you know, let me back up. I, it is a New Year's movie, okay. but uh, I don't know if I consider it a New Year's movie, but it is a New Year's movie. It takes place during New Year's. Yeah. That's, All right. That's, that's, that's what's going on. That's fine. Christmas movies in June. It so uh, this movie had a budget of $37 million. Okay. okay. Uh, made $215.4 million at the box office. Okay. Um, it wasn't critically acclaimed. A lot of people didn't really like it. Okay. Uh, Gene and Roger well, I'm so gave happy the picture two thumbs down. Interesting. Ooh. Both disappointed of them. with the film uh, because this film is a sequel, so they thought. Look how you nothing. went with their first names versus uh, Roger uh, and Ebert. <laughs> yeah. Tomato, tomato. Cisco <laughs> and Ebert. Nope. Cisco, yeah, Cisco. Um, <laughs> anyways, they felt this movie wasn't uh, as good that they just rehashed some old stuff from the first movie. Okay, so it's a sequel. Yeah, this is a sequel. All yes. right. Um, this is a sequel of a movie that also spawned this sequel. A uh, successful cartoon show and a rebooted movie recently. Okay. So it's done by Columbia Pictures. Okay. I have no clue. Really? Well, yeah. well Columbia Pictures is the one who produced it. Okay. They, they pressured the original writers and director of the first film to really push and make this film, they, even though oh, they, they really didn't want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah, I got it. Keep going. Keep going. Keep it, going. It's Ghostbusters 2. Okay. <laughs> Let's just watch this, okay? Let's do it. <laughs> totally. Yes. Happy New Year! America's largest city is about to pay for the nastiness of its inhabitants. <laughs> Go on TV and tell everyone in New York to be nice to each other? When the slime starts to rise, the Titanic just arrived. Yeah. Better late than never. Better late than never. Inspiration to the name of this series. <laughs> Harris Yulin. Sometimes Shit happens. Someone's gotta deal with it. Yeah, the chair. Sucking the guts guys with the Ghostbusters. Yeah, Sucking the guts guys with the Ghostbusters. The superstars of the Ecto 1A. Let's go, Larry Brothers! Praise the guys! I tried him from Murray! Gave him the chair! Make some time. Do, re, egon. Ho, ho, ho. I've got all new cheat moves. Your spirits. If we don't do something by midnight, you will be remembered in history as the man who let New York get sucked down into the tenth level of hell. And kick some slime. I don't remember him saying that during that scene. He sounds it later. I hate Jello. Oh well, there's always room for Jello. I look like that. Peter McNichol. Happy New Year. Close <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler. Ghostbusters too. You're short. Your belly button sticks out too far. And you're a terrible burden on your poor mother. Bill Murray. Dan Agler. End credit scene. Sigourney Weaver. Harold Ramis. Rick Moranis. Yeah. Oh, Rick Moranis. Why did they give Andy Potts credit right there? Right. No rendered special effects. Ghostbusters too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're the beautiful. We're the only. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. We're back. We're back. Yes. 
And then you jump into the uh, Bobby Brown music. I ain't afraid of no ghost. Ghost busters! So, so, you, so you had a uh, revelation, I guess, for Ghostbusters 2, didn't you, regarding uh, Vigo? Yeah, of course. Max von Sydow does the voice of Vigo the Carpathian, Carpathian uh, which I did not realize until this year that that was a thing. I had no clue that Max von Sydow was Vigo. It's Vigo! Uh, but yes, I love Ghostbusters 2 in its own special way. Yes, yes. Uh, I love Ghostbusters 2. I love the original Ghostbusters. But for some reason, I feel Ghostbusters 2 is more quotable for me. I, I say I say more quotes from this movie than I do the first one. Um, I've never counted them, but it's possible. I mean, I just quoted the hell out of this one, but I mean, yes, Ghostbusters 2 is quite quotable. How often do we go around going, ooh, but I would. Ooh, but I would. Uh, he's sleeping. Oh, but oh, <laughs> Peter McNichol. That's just the thing. I'm a, I'm a diehard Peter McNichol fan, and for him to play Janos Poha, uh, I, the Upper West Side, I, I just feel like there are good characters in here. I like the way that they all, you know, play off of each other. But story-wise, I prefer. Ghostbusters. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Although I do love when they take the Statue of Liberty, you know, Lady higher Liberty. Higher and higher. One thing that bothered me, even to this day, when the Statue of Liberty crashes down and they're there and they're looking over, how did they rappel down and get through her slots when their packs were bigger than the slots, than the slots of her head? Ah, uh, you know what? Magic. Movie magic, maybe the the, the good slime, good slime, good slime. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful with the beautiful cigar. cigar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean there there are things in this movie that I'm like, okay, I I I just I don't like the way they certain things play out, but I just I took it, and that's the thing is I remember going and watching Ghostbusters 2 opening night sold out show. They actually did give us the thermal mugs, which they show in the movie, except ours were all black versus the ones in the movie, I believe, have the white rim in the bottom. Uh, we didn't get balloons, but we did get the thermal mugs. The only thing, too, that I, it made me really sad about this is like when it first starts, the movie's first starts, it's like everything that they did for the first movie was like nothing and they yeah. kind of are but they kind of talked about it though true but they kind of resorted to like going to birthday parties who are you gonna like, call oh, yeah. like, so like, but i feel like between that time they should yeah they should have had at least some more success than and him. and that's what we actually got in a pretty big discussion about ghostbusters 2 not too long ago where that's why I understand why Siskel and Ebert say it just kind of felt like the same motions as the first movie because they were back to square one again. They were down on their luck. They weren't really successful with the exception. Yeah, they Ray had the sued. occult books. Granted, yeah, they, they went back down to being, you know, pariahs of the industry versus, is this boring you, Vanessa? Uh, pariahs Sorry, of no. the industry. She stayed up all late last night watching all the Ghostbusters, all two of them. But <laughs> Ghostbusters, really. they, they, we started That's over. Like, we had times. to go back and, and rebuild again to make them the Ghostbusters, right. where it's like, I wanted them to be the next level. Like, let's grow from where they were at the end of the first one. When they left, the, the, the apartment after the penthouse blew off the top. I understand, yes, they came up with reasons why they're back down at the bottom, which they work, but at the same time, they reached a, 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 a pitch when it comes to what the Ghostbusters were doing. They were on Larry King. Uh, they How's they were successful. Have you seen him lately? We've got ghosts and a spooky... Yeah, that's the whole montage. And I felt like they just went back to the bottom, let's do it again, where we should have gotten into the franchises beyond our wildest dreams. They should have gone to that next level sure. of the Ghostbusters being interdimensional space police when it comes to uh, battling out baddies from other dimensions. And I just felt like, no, now we're starting over and it just kind of put a, a, a crutch into the series, a limp, where it should have become something more than the first one. And I think that is kind of one of the things why I don't really like the remake as well, the reboots with the all the girl cast one that they did with Paul Feig, is because they started again at the bottom. They yeah. weren't already established and I feel like it would have been awesome if, if they, they were like a franchise. If it was a franchise and they had these girls come in because they wanted to be part of the Ghostbusters and the Ghostbusters were there as their mentors. Right. Instead of trying to recreate the and characters. Right, instead of trying to recreate 
treat the characters. I, I think that it would have been awesome to do it that way or do it like the interdimensional right. space. Yeah. But when it comes to Ghostbusters 2 and I was sitting in that theater opening night and it played out, it felt the way it felt when I first watched The Phantom Menace except not the same result at the end, where I'm watching it and it's playing out before my eyes, being a diehard Ghostbusters fan with all the toys, the backpack, the, the trap and everything. And I'm like, this isn't going the way I was hoping it really? would. Really? Yeah, that was even, the first time. I mean, you were much younger then. Of That's course. That's interesting. I, I had a completely different like, experience. Bye. I was, I, I loved it. I, from the Vividly, beginning. I'm like, this is not going the way I thought it was. Interesting. What did you guys think? Because for me, a completely different experience. I watched it and I was like, I love it. I know some people didn't, but it's great. It's quotable. It, the Titanic just arrived. And Cheech Marin. Throwing Cheech in there. Yeah. yeah. Better, Better late than, than ever. ever is the exact moment when I said that would be a great title for the segment from Ready to the Party. And with the music too, the soundtrack, you went with that uh, the Dougie Fresh and, and Bobby Brown and uh, it was different. <laughs> it was 80s. It was very Jack 80s. City or whatever. Yeah, uh, Flip City. Flip City. Um, there we go. Yeah. When it comes to the score versus the first one when you had, uh, was it Elmer Bernstein yeah. that did the score for the first Ghostbusters? Mm -hmm. It felt very 70s, even though it came out in the 80s. It felt 70s versus this one which was like pure which is, 80s which is understandable though of course too, because i mean the first one didn't come out until what 84 right so you still kind of have that lingering of the 70s sure, there sure. whereas this one came out in 89 but so you have full-on 80s going on yeah there. but isn't it noticeable when you watch a movie and its sequel when they take the composer away and bring in a new composer and the instrumental music, not just, you know, the montage Bobby Brown stuff. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take control. Uh, the score it's, feels completely superhero-y versus that intimate sure, 70s sure. feel of Elmer Bernstein. It's totally true. Like, when you have a, a music that you are as like you compare it together and then they kind of do something different it doesn't have that same feeling of course and the one thing that i can like bring as an example that i could think of right now as in that's happening now is from um alan silvestri from the first avengers going to the second yeah. one when they had brian tyler yeah. slash uh, danny alfman for the age of ultron so it wasn't really like the same. Yeah. And then they brought Alan Silvestri back and then it felt the same. So it's like... Same, same, yeah. but different. It was not yeah. the same aesthetic to me. Yeah. Right. Like this didn't feel like Ghostbusters at that time. But over time, I grew to love certain characters and certain... I, I think that Ernie Hudson should have kept the mustache. There's just something about this Winston <laughs> that felt way different. What about the packs? Still Ernie Hudson, did still you, Winston. Did you happen to catch the locomotive number? Sorry, I, I missed, missed it. it. <laughs> but yeah, the, and we didn't get enough of the, the Ghostbusters house. I feel like we were out of the house. We got maybe the, the dark room where they were doing the, the printing. We got the dancing of the toaster. And then we got a little bit of Lewis running away and flipping over the couch when Slimer okay, was there. Okay, I, I totally forgot about it. Let's talk about Lewis for a moment. Sure. So he gets on a proton pack. He gets on the bus. He goes to the museum and he's sitting there blasting on the outside. From the outside's perspective, it looked like he's the one who did it. Right. Yeah, the other Ghostbusters true. failed when they very did it. True, yeah. They were inside and they busted it. I always thought that was weird. Everyone's all cheering him on. Yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah. he's all like, he's like super happy it. about did it. Did it, guys. Yep. And I don't like how I don't. But like, I love how he like comes walking up and then he starts to like. It's I love. Like, it's a good moment. It's a funny that. moment. It's yeah. funny moment. Uh, I don't like how Annie Potts basically became a cartoon character yeah, 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 of Janine. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was more more conservative back course, then. She yeah. even had a dress that was up to here, but now her yeah, hair now is more she's bright all, color. Hey, you know what? Eighties could do that to you though. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's I don't true. know. Yeah. I wasn't around for most of it. I and mean, then Sigourney. We didn't even talk Sigourney Weaver and the kid Oscar. Oscar. Rest in peace to one of the twins that passed mm. away. But yeah, so Gordy Weaver, I, it felt like Dana Barrett was back. It, I mean, it, that whole thing with Peter felt like they were already past their yeah. relationship. It, it felt progressively I did. natural. And I, I felt it was natural for all the characters, too, yeah. one where they were, you know? Right. Vakeman, what he was doing with the shows. Right. And then... 
Egon doing doing the testing. So let's put let's a puppy. Let's see what happens when we take away the puppy. Yeah, <laughs> this messed up. He's Raise a, a cult. My best of the coven. Uh huh. And it, it progressively it felt right. Although I think again, Ernie uh, Ernie Hudson, Winston Zedmar, got, got the short, the end, short of end of the stick, stick again. Man, come yeah. on, he's one of the Ghostbusters. And why isn't he in there with them? He's like, I he's he's not a part of the crew until later in the movie again. And I love yeah. Ernie Hudson. So yeah. yeah, I mean, Ghostbusters two definitely has some awesome redeeming qualities to it. I love it so much. Quotable. But at the end of the story, I wish there would have been a good trilogy, a full three movie, well, which Dan Aykroyd's working on right now, apparently, for the last 20 years he's been right. saying that. And it won't be the same, though. It won't, it won't be. be. Unless they do it right, because the original story, if you were in Hellfast, was about Bill Murray's character going, being dead, and then Hellbound. Following, following him there. So. Right. Maybe some tweaks to that original script might help us out with Harold Ramis. It's very possible, and you know what? I still want to see the new Ghostbusters coming in, working with the old Ghostbusters. Which I think they have to do to survive, because unfortunately the last one was a failure, so they were unable yeah. to do the cartoons. So I think, I think everybody wants to do right by Ghostbusters, and I think... Getting the original cast and original writer together to do this is, is a pivotal point. And do point the for this. interdimensional, like that's do an interdimensional. Yeah. Awesome. absolutely. It sports, would be sports. definitely the best. Love the episodes of Real Ghostbusters when they go of into course, there and the they, ghost world. they try to go to get Slimer who got stuck. Or in Or the there. Ghostbusters the game as well. Yeah, yeah. E Egon got stuck in the Ghost World in one of the episodes, and they had to go get Egon. So it is very possible for them to go and do it. I just hope that they could end up making it happen and come oh, to man. fruition for us to enjoy. Absolutely. So, this is a long video. We have obviously lots to say. We could probably go on for hours. Our first Ghostbusters review of the first trailer actually did very well. So you guys could check out more of what we think about Ghostbusters yeah. by checking that Better Late Than Never of the original Ghostbusters. So thank you guys for watching this reaction and review of Ghostbusters 2. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe. And do the thing on our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Stardust. All the social networking gin joints. You know where they are. Kick the party, fill the party, keep the party going. And our Patreon gets us where we need to go. Thank Thank you, Travis, for this wonderful New Year's episode of Better Late. Thank you, guys. Thank you, you guys, for following us in 2018, 2019. I hope it's good for you. I think it's going to be good for us. We got lots of stuff coming up. I hope you're paying attention. So, thank you thank so you. much. And as always, now it's time to say goodbye. And this party is over. It's Vigo.